Yeah, that's what it's <laughs> And that's how you like, yeah, man, we be complaining. They be like, I'm going to go ahead and out here and uh, shine these hubcaps real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Change these shots. Hey, Bapti. Hey, we got a guest on the on the uh, podcast. What up? What up? Uh, so let's do the intro. But yeah, Baptiste, we do a. Uh, I'm gonna do the intro in a second. But we do. We got a joke where basically, you know how like anytime black people want to get off the phone, they always create like some crazy excuse to like get off the phone. <laughs> so they be like, "Hey, man, let me go. Uh, I'm about to go cut my cat's toenails real quick, man. I'll call you back." <laughs> <laughs> it just got crazier and crazier every so time. So we always we make up like some crazy, like anything, just to get on the phone. So it'd be like, man, let me about to go do this laundry real quick, man. I'll call you. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and squeeze these honeycombs. I'll get some honey. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Let me go tend to this beehive real quick, man. Right. What's going on, everybody? I'm Dan the Realtor. Are the worst home price declines behind us? Could millennial homeowners be outpacing millennial renters? We got the DMV market report, the real estate hot or not. We jumping into the comment section, and today we got a special guest, Eves Jean Baptiste. Welcome to the Real Estate Wire, folks. What's going on, everybody? I'm Dan the Realtor, Mortgage Coach Marcus. Here. And today we got a special guest. We got Eves Jean Baptiste. What's up, bro? Hey, how you doing, man? Appreciate you having me on. Nothing Appreciate much, you guys. man. Yes, Thanks sir. for yes, jumping sir. on the pod, bro. So tell us a little bit, maybe about a couple seconds about yourself. Then we're going to jump more into your whole business and everything you got going on later in the pod. But just tell us a little bit about yourself, bro. Yeah, so my name is Eve Jean Baptiste. I go by Baptiste. Uh, been born and raised in a DMV, uh, specifically out of DC. Uh, now, currently been in Silver Spring for the last you know 15 years, but been doing real estate, just grinding five years in the industry and continue to move forward. So, it's really yeah. good. Who, uh, what uh, brokerage are you with? I'm with Keller Williams. Okay, okay. You look. Yeah, you we look, met. We 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 knew each. We know. We see each other around all the time. Mainly, yeah. we see each other at G Car event. G Car events, yeah. listing club. You know, just. Oh right, listing club. Bolt, yeah. Did the boat was it? Was it boat that y'all went to? Oh yeah, we did boat. We did the four way pricing strategy. Yeah, four way pricing. Did you do boat? You didn't do boat this time. I didn't do boat this time, but okay. I've done boat before. Yeah, boat is legit. So boat is like a training, twice. a Keller Williams training, hmm. uh, super training event for mega agents that want to increase their production. Yeah, so the first time I did bold, I pretty much doubled my business in like the next six months. Yeah, so I mean, that's just, great. <laughs> yeah. That's that's so funny that like it. I mean, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So if you actually take the information from the people that have been successful doing it, or came up with the information, or whatever, if you implement it, I mean, it proves to work. But you yeah. got to get you got to work it in order to get something good out of it. Yeah, and, that, and that's really, that's really dope that you doubled your business after yeah. doing that after six months. So don't be a hard head. Listen to Baptiste. Yeah. yeah. So let's get into the first real estate topic. We're going to get into the top real estate headline today. And according to the National Association of Realtors and Keeping Current Matters, they're thinking, which I'd love to get your opinion on this because you work a lot with buyers, that the worst home price declines are behind us. And according to this article, uh, it says, if you're following the news today, you may feel a little bit unsure about what's happening with home prices and fear of whether the worst is yet to come uh that's because today's headline like we always talk about coach are painting an unnecessarily negative picture picture right because they gotta sell clicks and many times what i find like a lot of times when you read into these headlines that actually when you read the actual article it's actually not as bad as the headline actually looks like the headline is 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 the uh, eye catcher the attention grabber yeah, you need the headline stuff. Yeah. That's what right. gets you to dive into the source material. Yep, exactly. It says, just five months ago, uh, according to Selma Hep, a chief economist at CoreLogic, prices were declining on a seasonally adjusted month-over-month -month basis in 92% of all major U.S. markets. Fast forward to March, and the situation has done a literal 180, with mm. prices now rising 92% in 92% of all markets in the U.S. since February, what markets are what what markets represent at eight percent? I would say the joints on the on the West Coast. Oh, <laughs> I probably say True. the Midwest. Yeah, Midwest. I know we, the article we were looking at. Um, the West Coast, everything's the dropping. Yeah, they have they were having significant price drops, and mm -hmm. over here, I mean, I know I'm experiencing it price increases. I, what you seeing on your side, Baptiste? Man, I'm seeing competitive offers, you know, com multi multiple offer scenarios. I don't see the inventory. So it's to me, it's simple economic supply and demand. The supply is limited and demand still remaining constant. At the end yeah. of the day, people need a place to live. And for and, people in the cheap seats, what's inventory? Uh, so inventory to me is just the number of homes available on the market. So 
right now we're a little over a month's worth of inventory. Mm -hmm. So when you think about that, uh, what is a buyer's market when you have like six months worth of inventory? We're nowhere yeah. even close. Six plus. Six plus yeah. months of inventory. We're, we're, um, and you're licensed in DMV, all three? Yeah, I'm licensed in D.C., Maryland, Virginia. Okay. So I, I treat all three states fairly. Yeah. You know, or D.C. is not a state, I, I, but you know. I appreciate yeah. that because I was just watching. You're a Virginia boy, by the way, so yeah. you yeah. got his heart already. Virginia? <laughs> where? 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 No, I was watching, you know, so Virginia gets carried a lot of times, right? Because, so they think that Baltimore is not part of DMV. That's a battle. And then they think, well, <laughs> D.C. is, you know, the, 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 the Mecca or whatever of DMV. But then I was watching this, some some dude, some Instagram comedian, and, and Baltimore and D.C. were back and, battling back and forth. The scene was set at FedEx Stadium. Um, and, you know, Baltimore has, like, he's calling him dummy, whatever, you know, whatever their lingo is. And then the DC dude was calling him Bama and Joe. He was like calling him Mo. And it was it was funny back and forth. And then all of a sudden, this dude from VA come out the backside and was like, come on, guys, let's just, we're all part of this thing. And, and, then, and then the, D, the Baltimore dude was like, man, you a dummy. You know, you know, and then the DC dude was like, but you, you're talking like a Bama or whatever. But I love how, like, this, this hodgepodge and this good mesh of, of people. I mean, there's so much good in this area. And uh, it's good to have good realtors. That in the area, um, diverse, that come from different backgrounds, um, have different uh, business perspectives. Because you were talking about the commercial stuff that, you know, earlier, and we might come back to it, that, you know, the light bulb went out for me and, and for him as well. Like, we looked at each other and were like, oh, you just gave <laughs> you're a brilliant idea because you, you operate in a different space. And oh, it, yeah. And the oh, oh, yeah. We looked at that in the comments. Like, that was. Yeah. That was, that yeah. was a gem. That was a gem. So the article continues. It says, so here's what this means for you if you're a seller, if you're a homeowner. If you've been, according to uh, Selma Hep, she says, if you're a homeowner, if you've been holding off on selling because you're worried about what's happening with home prices and how it could impact the value of your home, it may be time to jump back in because the latest data has actually turned in your favor. And then she says for buyers, her advice to buyers, if you've been waiting because you didn't want to purchase something that would decrease in value, you now have peace of mind that things are looking up. Buying now lets you... Make your move before, before home prices climb mm. and gives you the chance to own an asset that typically grows in value over time. And so that kind of like plugs into kind of like what we were talking about, uh, episode 25, which I thought was funny when I listened back, how you kept trying to, you were like, you were trying to get me to say like, do they, should they be buying now? Should they be buying now? And yo, my answer is the same. Like buy now, buy later, don't matter. Like do what you want to do. Just understand the market that you're going to be buying in. I still, I'm going to stand where I stand. For sure. Because I wanted you to say that answer. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, look, if you can buy, yes, if you can buy now, it's wise to do it. Because if you can buy now and you don't buy now, then you're helping who the person that does own, that you're renting from, acquire mm. more wealth, more opportunities for themselves that you just simply eliminate yourself from having access to. Don't talk about landlords. Me and me and Baptiste landlords. I ain't, and yeah. I ain't, I ain't knocking it. And <laughs> I'm, I ain't knocking it. But what I am, <laughs> but what I am saying is, the long term goal is for you to acquire generational wealth for your families, me as well, but for us to empower other people to do to do the same thing. So where the opportunity presents itself, yo, jump in because if you don't. All right, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do devil's they, advocate. They're they gonna keep giving. Yeah. I'm gonna do devil's advocate. All right, here we go. All right. I'm gonna right. script, script. You script me. I'm gonna script you. Here we go. Uh -oh. Let's see. This is a test. Uh -oh. This is a, it's a pop quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Baptiste, I would buy now, man. But I'm just oh, okay. gonna. I'm just gonna wait. I'm gonna just wait for prices to come down a little bit. Okay, I, I hear exactly where you're coming from. Now, I just have one question. What do? You, what specifically do you? Where do you where do you think the prices are going to come down to? I don't know, less than what it is right now. All right. Well, look, I am going to tell you one thing. You obviously got to make the best decision for you, and I always counsel everyone to do the exact same thing. Make that best decision. Yeah. Now, I I'll tell you right now, I'm a student of the game. When <laughs> I look at real estate over a 30 year period, mm. when you start to look over a 50 year period historically. We only have one major period where prices fell, and that's what, 2008. So are you waiting for, in 2008, and what would consist of a crash right now is a 10% decrease. Mm -hmm. So if we had a 10% decrease in prices, that would be 
essentially a crash perspective. Uh, now, the question the question I have for you is are you trying to buy for you for the next two years or are you trying to buy something where you're gonna own it for the next ten to fifteen years? Well, I mean, I just want I want first I want the interest rates to come down and I also want the prices to be cheaper and I want something that when I buy it uh, it's going to grow in value. Well, I want, the you, tri- I want the holy trinity. Yeah. Hey, look. Trifecta. Hey, look. If I could make that happen for you, I would snap my fingers and do that right now. I need that for you, yeah. me, everybody in my circle. Right, right, right. Everybody. And scene. And that's dope, right? Because, I mean, we're buyers too. Yeah. I mean, we're in the market, but we're me, you, all three of us, we're also buyers of, of the same product that we sell. We I, just, I just closed on a property on Monday. What you close on? A uh, single family home in Silver Spring, fixer upper, three thousand square feet. You know, nice, I'm trying to nice. be like you, my friend. I'm trying to be like other people. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You did give a perspective, like when you when you said the ten percent reduction would constitute a crash. Yeah, but really, if we're talking about prices have been going up, average what three percent month over month, even in this calendar year. All you, all that ten percent crash today would do would put it put us back to where the numbers were in January. Mm, yeah, right. if you think, if you think about it, <laughs> if you think still? about it, people that waited from twenty 2020 twenty to twenty twenty two, there was a thirty percent increase in, in purchase prices. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you know, like I have people that Gee. told me in twenty twenty, oh, I'm gonna just wait and circle back in twenty twenty two to buy the same asset for almost a hundred k more. Right. Yeah. So it was just, it's just. So listening to the, other people instead of listening to the stats, the the actual facts of the situation. So that's what I look at. I look at yeah. the numbers. And so obviously it's scary. So here's some numbers. Here's some numbers. Case Schiller. What's Ooh. FHFA? What's that's the fa- what's the Federal Housing Finance? Oh, Federal Home Financing Agent. Yeah, oh, yeah, I can pretty much guess that. Yeah. Core Logic. So all three of them have their they, they, they have this trend. And I'll put it up as a graphic for those of y'all watching on the YouTube. So Case Schiller. Uh, in January 2022, it goes from 1.6 increase, 1.9 2022. It goes up 2%. This is the uh, month over month percentage change in home sales values, in home sale values seasonally adjusted. April, it went up 1.6 of 2022. May 2022, it went up 1.3. In June of 2022, it went up 0.4%. Then in July of 2022, we had our first decrease in a long time, since pre-pandemic, it went down by 0.03%. I don't know if any... You remember July 2022. Yeah. That's when them interest rates started going... Eh, I think it cranked up you, to like 6 or 7 or something like that. Everybody they, was it like, went oh, fast. Yeah. It went, it it went was, really fast. Like It was just 3, then it hit 4, then it just... Dude, I don't know ju- where 5 went. It just skipped that. July, <laughs> August, and September were <laughs> tough months in real estate, bro. I did some deals, but I had like a lot of people drop out. Because the interest rates jumped up and they were like, they got scared off. I mean, they're back now, but they got- I didn't feel it until about August. August was, yeah. I still call it, like, I call it Red Monday, where I just <laughs> <laughs> just took a red marker and I yeah, remember I got people the board were jumping out of high-rise people, buildings. <laughs> yeah. I got the board of people that I'm like working with, you know, so I look like looking, mm-hmm. just make sure I'm staying organized. And yeah. I just remember putting a red line. I was just calling them, putting a red line, like, okay, Ooh. this person's no longer looking. This person, yeah. no. by the time I was done- it was, you know, 70% of the people were just yeah. out of the market looking by that point. But what people failed to realize was that that created a layer of opportunity to finally negotiate. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, I got a lot of my buyers out and then I got a lot of my clients on the market. I was like, look, if you're trying to jump, if you're trying to sell, now is the time to do it. Because a lot of the people who were putting their properties on the market also needed to buy and they don't got nowhere to go. So a lot of my clients, most of them, some of them need a place to go, but a lot of them don't really need a place to go because they're either downsizing and stuff like that or getting rid of like a, you know, inheritance property or something. So I was telling them like hit the market and August of 2022, we went down 0.2. November, we went down 0.3. December, we went down 0.3. January, April 2. And then February, we started creeping back up. Mm. And now we're going back up month over month again, like we were talking about in the last episode. That's what I was getting ready to jump into because you were talking about like, how fast the rates rose. I'm looking back here. Now, Freddie Mac website is, is a great tool. You just got to know how to like where to look. But in the beginning of January 2022, we had like 3.2. By uh, 
by March. Interest rates? Mm-hmm. Woo! On 30-year fix. By March, uh, March 10th, we were at about 4.1, right? Yeah. And then by April 14th, we were at 5%. And then by, uh, when, when did we hit six? <laughs> then it dropped back down to like <laughs> to like four point nine, like in in August. But then it went right back up to five point two. Yeah, and just kept going. Everybody thought we was done in August. They're like, oh, four point nine, and we're yeah. down. Then it went and back up. By, by, <laughs> by, we by September fifteenth, we were at six point two percent. And then you know, and we and we jumped into the six point sevens, six point nine. We were at seven percent in October. But then remember after it was like we were above we were above seven, and then remember out November eleventh, uh, November first, November tenth, something like that. It dropped back down, but right here it says it dropped back down to like six and a half, and that's when um, I, I got online and I was telling you and tag, you know tagging people like yo the rates dropped an entire point because they went back down to like six point two, and and then you know we've been climbing back up since then and we're six point eight right now. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's kind of what we've been tracking, you know, the entire time we've been doing the podcast. And for all of y'all in the Real Estate Wire Squad, y'all been following us heavy. By the way, while you're on watching YouTube or if you're listening on the podcast, make sure to like, subscribe, uh, and hit that notifications button so that you're the first to know when we drop new content. Let's get into the Coach's Corner. Yes, sir. What you got for us, Coach? Man, sometimes, you know, different generations tend to not listen to older generations. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was a hardhead and I didn't listen to the boomers. So, sorry, y'all. Mom, sorry, sorry, boom. Sorry, 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 mom. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, millennials. And, and I'm not sure what this what the bracket of years is, but that's because I see it change I every like, now and then. Yeah, I, th- I thought it was like 1980 80 to like. Yeah, I've seen 78, 77, but this, this article is saying. Those born between 1981 and 90, 1996. Yeah, sure. Um, and it said are now reaching middle age. Ha, ah, so y'all getting old too. Um, <laughs> but they're starting to earn enough money to afford the cost of purchasing a home. So what this stat is showing is that that 50 percent, 52% of millennials are now owning a home, which is the largest generation in the nation. And they've transitioned from being renters to owners. Mm. So now it's showing that Millennials are now uh, millennial homeowners are now outpacing millennial renters, so they're getting the message. So you know, information that we bring uh, that they get from other places uh, is encouraging folks, and good job with that. So it's encouraging these young folks. I sound like an old dude, but it's encouraging, <laughs> these, <laughs> encouraging these young folks to uh, get out here and invest in themselves, yeah, and stop paying somebody else's rent. So it's all good. Um, and the average first time millennial homeowner is 34 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean that that that's very interesting and encouraging. Um I think that you know, kind of like what we were saying a while ago, man, it's like look, people are going to pretty much level set. Yeah. They're going to accept that, yo, know, this is the new normal. Mm-hmm. Um interest rates are what they are, and like I said, it's not so much about trying to time the market it's more so about buying when what you want to buy is available. And check this out. So we talked about Virginia. So um, Richmond, Virginia experienced the largest growth in millennial homeownership among the top 50 metro areas in the United States. Richmond? Richmond. Stand up. 804. They had a 234% increase. Dang. That's a lot, <laughs> but 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 so so, my I've got some cut co- some some cousins that are down there. Shout out to you, Rochelle. She's a homeowner in Richmond. But there's the, the city, the downtown. They re- revitalized that. Mm, okay. Richmond had a bad a bad name. You know, it's a state capital, but it had a bad name for a lot of years. But then when you get outside of that, and they got some great schools around there, VCU, um, University of Richmond, Virginia State's around there. This and much, but then. Um, on the outskirts, you have your Glen Allen, uh, not Glen, is it Glen Allen? Yeah. But you have your other outskirts, your pockets of like suburban areas that are closely attached to Richmond and they all consider it like the Richmond area. Mm. So these areas are exploding for like young, uh, yeah. young couples. And Dude, young we're families. seeing that. And, um, I mean, I do a lot of stuff in Waldorf and I want to get your opinion on this too, Baptiste, where, cause you do, you're really, really buyer heavy. Yeah. Right. And so where are you seeing kind of the migration happening what are you seeing boots on the ground, the conversations that you're having with your buyers? And then also, where are you seeing 
uh, the buyers that are successful versus the buyers that are, you know, struggling a little bit. Where are you seeing the differences in, in their mindsets? I mean, personally, for me and my migration pattern, I don't know if it's because of where my messaging has been recently, but uh, most of the buyers that I've, I've worked with now have been centered towards uh, coming in, coming into PG County. Mm-hmm. So I see a lot of uh, a lot of big migration in PG County. So what I've noticed is that buyers will follow trends. So it, they'll if the prices are better in a certain county that surround the district, they'll move towards there. Mm-hmm. I'll often hear a buyer say, "Hey, I'll consider Virginia if the price is right." I'm like, well, you ain't going to consider Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> the Commonwealth. <laughs> there, there's wealth in the name for a reason. Dude. <laughs> yeah. It, it's now, people have found people like because the, the old mm-hmm. adage used to be it's like, hey, if you had a buyer and they were looking in the 300s, man, you could find them a sick spot, you know, like in right now. No, well, actually in Alexandria. Oh, in yeah. Alexandria. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you could move them down there. Well, now people have found out and yeah. they're competing to be there. You yeah. know, there's. You know, multiple offer scenarios, a property hits the market and and I, I like to use the, the the inventory scenario. I did a search of Alexandria townhomes up to like 800,000. And I said, looking for just the single family homes that had been on the market longer than seven days and 12 properties mm. popped up. That's just terrible. Alexandria. For an entire, that's it's ridiculous. That's it's an entire city, <laughs> and that's a heavily populated city too. Yes, so they Seven have a really properties. fast turnover rate, like like that. Yeah, like that, and, and, and that's for from what zero dollars up to what, what from zero to like eight hundred. Oh, really? Why do you think? Why do you think that is? People. It's proximity, so you sure. can be, you can get to the city. You you know at any and at any point in Alexandria, you can be at the city within thirty minutes. Right now, obviously, I've noticed that the closer you get towards that Pentagon area, the higher the price point gets. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, so, for sure. yeah. And then, what so, are you seeing as far as like your buyers that are winning versus your buyers that are struggling a little bit? Aggressive terms, typically, it's not always price. I just want a scenario where we were not the highest price, but all of our terms were really, really quick. Um, so we partnered with the right lenders, partnered with the right people. So I know that my inspector can get out there within 24 hours. So I had a one, I have one day inspection contingencies so that, you know, like my guys are getting in there. Yeah. So I'm calling like, Hey, if, if we're about to win, you need to keep me posted so that I'm on top of getting the inspector out there within same day or within 24 hours. So my buyers already have report in hand everything done by the time they have to make a decision. That's a good point that you bring up because I do a lot of listings and when I'm sitting there in front of an offer spreadsheet, that's a very valuable uh, tool to cut your contingencies the days down because for a homeowner, you know, the longer that the property's off the market, the less valuable it becomes in the eyes of the other buyers. Yeah. So to me, the one day inspection contingency is what I've done to you, you still have a buyer and they still want to inspect the home. So you, I think last year they came out with the uh, statistic that uh, a large percentage of homeowners from 2020 to 2022 didn't do inspections and they regretted it. Yep. Well, for me, I've never waived an inspection. I bought an investment property that was a complete shell. I still inspected it. Mm. I want to know what I'm getting myself into. So I could never counsel anybody out of that scenario. Mm-hmm. But it's like, how do we still accomplish the goal? <laughs> but still give something to the seller to make our offer appealing. So it's yeah. me being buyer heavy, I have to come up with all the creative solutions on how to give my buyers competitive advantages against the rest of the population. So mm-hmm. I've embraced it, I love it. You know? yeah. So for my side of it, I'm winning and getting my buyers into better positions because I'm, I know what, what the seller wants. They wanna know that, hey, if they choose us, that we're gonna stick with it. But then if for any reason we find something and it's crazy and they're and we're not able to make it work, they can still have they only only one day has passed. They can turn back to anybody right. else that they just had and still go under contract yeah. with them. So that's what I've done to kind of to kind of help my buyers get that peace of mind, but still keep that contingency, but then help the seller on their end. Hey, look, this guy really wants it. This girl really wants it. Like, I let's go, the, let's do it. I love the fact that like the strategy sounds the same. I even I can see the thin the, the line that connects realtor to realtor and even the others that we've had here. But like every realtor has just a little bit different tweak, right? A little bit something a little bit different in your sauce, right? That that helps you be successful. 
Um, and I always joke that <laughs> that I don't like telling my sauce all the time. Um, and sometimes it don't work, right? But I like I like the fact that you're like, man, that one day inspection, right? It just you just get super aggressive on terms. But what I heard even through that is your high level communication and like you are on it, you are hands on. Um, and you need a real time. I mean, you're, you're the same way. And, uh, to the extent, <laughs> to the extent where like we talk about some of our clients, like they can't get documents together, but Mr. Wheeler can help you and jump in and get, I'll, dri- I'll drive to your house <laughs> and photocopy them and get them from and you. That's part, and that's <laughs> part of the sauce. So, like sometimes you, you, you gotta do it. Hey, look, you know, like I've got a buyer right now that doesn't speak English. So I speak Creole. So I'm, I'm helping her. I cut, I go, I went and picked her up from her home. Like, let's go toward a neighborhood of where you're thinking of buying, like whatever it takes. Sometimes yeah. it's not. Do you put buyers in your car? It depends. Do they want to be in the car? It's kind of old school, right? Sometimes, you know, like it just, it just depends. Some eighties, some buyers, it's like they're coming from work. So, you know, like you You already drove to work. Yeah. You already drove to work. Let's go meet at the property. Oh, Um, right, 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 right. But some, like I had a buyer that's moving from, you know, like he's moving from Silver Spring to Alexandria. So I live in Silver Spring. He's 15 minutes away from my house. No, just come park the car at my house. Um, and then let's hop in the car and we'll drive down to Alexandria, do our tours together. So, yeah. So they, they get a chance to really know you. And you're yeah. a, little bit, a little bit deeper and you get the chance to really know them and yeah you know, i mean we it. you get to connect and i mean being in the car is something that disappeared for a few years yeah um, so i'm just now having a few buyers in in the car sure. but it all depends on the situation do they have a car do they want like so do are they in the city so sometimes you get somebody that doesn't own a car and they're in the city so they'll meet you at the property and then you know shut them around yeah, and then good. yeah you know like I, I don't mind dropping people off at home but sometimes they're just like now nah, i got i'm about to go ahead happy hour after these showing so just drop me off at the metro i'm gonna get Bet. get to yeah. my spot so it just all depends yeah yeah for me it's just you kind of you need to meet people where they're at communicate how they want to yeah. communicate so yeah so let's get into the dmv market report <laughs> So, uh, for April 2023, let's dig into these numbers for the people who live in the area. (laughs) So, the number of new listings is down, which again, we know the less amount of homes that are available for sale, the more upward pressure that puts on prices. So, from year over year, we're down. So, 23,566. Uh, this month and last year this time we had 34,819 listings mm. so we're down 30 almost uh we're down four percent uh from month over month from this time in march and we're down 35 percent from this time last year of new homes coming to the market so more people are deciding i'm going to stay where i'm at yeah and that they have nowhere to go because they they don't they don't want to there's no there's no uh there's no desire for them to really leave a low interest rate to jump into a higher interest rate unless they really 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 need selling to my house i'm keeping it i'm right keeping, keeping all my joints new really? pending so pendings are the ones that have gone on the market and now they're under contract mm-hmm. so we're up from this time last month 4.1 percent. so we have more people buying properties but less properties hitting the market Mm-hmm. And this time last year, we're down new pendings 21%. And then closed sales, we're down. So there's less closings happening, 3.8% from last month. Uh, a total of 17,000 close, closings happened uh, in, um, in March. And uh, no, in March, from March. Now in April, we had 17,341. Last April, we had a 29% decrease from this time last year in April. Hmm. So the picture continues to remain the same. Prices continue to go up. The median sold price uh, from this time last month is up 3.5% from this time last month. Yeah. So the sold price continues to increase. The number of homes on market continues to decrease. And the average, I want to look at the average days on market. Our average days on market is increasing so now we have a 29 uh, days on market. April 2022, we were at 19 days on market. And now we're at about 29 days on market. Mm. So homes are staying on the market longer. They're 
less homes available. And as soon as those houses hit the market, people yeah. upbid them and they gone. I had a uh, talking to a realtor on the way here. Um, buyer looking in like the 1.4 million Potomac area, right? 1.4 million sales price. They offered 1.55 and, nope. lo- and lost mm-hmm. <laughs> to 1.67. Like they were short. She, was, she couldn't believe it. Her terms were aggressive. Um, and it's not about the, it wasn't about the short term times on the inspection or financing or the appraisal or anything like that. It was a number. Like <laughs> she's like, I have no idea where these people get these money for this money from. And we know that it was not worth one point six. But that's that, that's but, it, but it was worth one point six to those people. <laughs> that's my that was what I was about to say. I, I, I see a lot of people saying, Oh, the house is, you know, they're overpriced and the house isn't even isn't even worth that much. Yes, it is, because that's what it's sold for. It's, it's, willing, it's what you want to pay for. So if you say, oh, well, last year I could have got it for cheaper, but it ain't last year. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, unless you, uh, you know, can alter the time-space continuum, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, <laughs> and go back in time, but then, you know, you got the butterfly effect, so that's going to mess up everything. So long story short, you can't go back. We can't live in a prior market. We have to live in this market. So if it's sold for 1.6, that's how much it's worth. And it's the, worth what a buyer's willing to pay for. That's the new, you. <laughs> that's the new comp in the neighborhood. That's the now, comp. Now you yeah. got a property selling for one point six in the neighborhood. Yeah, and that bumping everybody else up. So that happened in Potomac. Uh, what was it? Right before, right when the pandemic started to kick off. To be honest, you saw the home prices in Potomac had been flat for probably like you know close to a decade. They stayed just very consistent, mm-hmm. and then the pandemic takes off, and people want more space. Good school districts. They see Potomac, them prices shot through the roof. Oh, when during that two percent uh that two percent discount? <laughs> yes. I wanna yes. ask you about so when you talk about like year uh, month over month, three percent, right? Increase. So over the last year and a half or so, the average home, cumulative. You know what I was gonna say? Yeah. What's the total? So so, so so let's just say over over the last like year and a half, mm-hmm. the average home uh values <clears throat> increase about seventeen to twenty percent, depends on where you are, right? Fifteen to twenty percent. So if we Jeez. continue in this trend from it's 3% higher in February than it was in January and 3% higher in March than it was in February and so on and so forth, and we stay at this 3%, that would mean that, that we've got a total of 36% increase <laughs> or, or in, a, in a 12-month time frame in, in 2023, or are we talking like an average of just 3%? I don't, how, how do y'all work that? How do y'all come up with that number? To be, to be honest, I think that with these current interest rates, I think we're going to see actual a lot more of an actual sales cycle of what real estate used to look like. So we actually had a period in no, October, November, December where prices kind of dipped a little bit. Yeah, it yeah. slowed, like real estate in general slowed down. That was, that was that artificial buyer's activity, buyer's market activity. Yeah, so you saw that the buyers kind of like took their time yeah and then once spring hit buyers just showed back up because no matter what you got new plans for the rest of the year yeah you always got the spring market yeah Mm -hmm. so the spring market comes back buyers come back and grows and so you'll i think that we'll probably see a tail off uh around like november december it's it's not that i'm gonna tell anybody to wait till november december because you don't and this (laughs) you don't know only the only thing the last three years have taught me is that you cannot (laughs) predict the future so don't try to Time the market and all that. You nope. find a good deal, you get it, you lock it down Do now. But I think that we'll see, you know, like more of that, more of that tail off towards the end of the year, mm. and then a pick back up at the beginning of next year. But it's just it, the same thing about real estate is just consistent year over year. Specifically in the DMV area, one of the most insulated markets in the world, it's that prices year over year have consistently go up, and right. Fueled by the fact that our federal government is based out of here. Yep. You know, fueled by the fact <laughs> we that we got schools. Yep. We got uh, everything. We got sports teams. Everything. We got the federal government. We got uh, private sector. Private sector. And so, the um, oh my the the uh, data centers right yeah data center alley data center the data center I saw this uh, statistic uh, in this graph map. On, on two Wednesday, and the data centers in in here in Loudoun County, which is still DMV, 
uh, whether you want to debate that or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> County. Hey, listen, what, what was the thing? With wherever, the asterisk. Where, yeah. wherever the metro, <laughs> wherever yeah. the metro goes, is considered. Only certain right? metro yeah. stops. They got, they got two in Ashburn and uh, in uh, Loudoun County. Anyway, hey, 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 they extended the metro. Hey, hey. We, so, we can call them DMV extended. Listen, I'm repping for y'all. Don't They're even worry. Don't, don't even worry about these dudes. I got y'all. You don't get no but, from but me. But the reality is that that this this powers. Uh, I think it said like ninety percent of the energy that throughout the entire United States. I mean, it. it I got to find the map. If I can find that map, I'll, I'll show it next time. But bro, it, it's crazy. It, so you have that that technology. I mean, it's needed, right? We got a tech sector. We got medical, and even if you look at the biotech industry, where you look at um, like if you go up two seventy two. 270 has one of the bi- largest biotech company like yeah. collections yeah. in the US. Yeah. So you got leading biosciences out of there. You got large employers that employ six figure earners yes. mm-hmm. in that area. So I mean, we got the long- hospitals, we got Walter Reed. This is a dope area. Let's just say it. Let's Johns just say Hopkins. that. It's just a dope area. It's probably one of yeah. the dopest areas. We rarely get those huge dips and stuff yeah. like the rest of the country because does. we don't have the huge dips in employment. Right. Oh. That's what. So that's when you look at Arizona. Arizona had a very, very large tech corridor. They're mm. heavily dependent on tech. So when tech does mass layoffs, what do you think is going to happen to the housing in that area? Right. Well, the yeah. federal government doesn't do mass layoffs. So right. I, I used to always say when I was, as I was growing up, you know, like in the DMV, it's just the only people not working here don't want to work. <laughs> right. Yeah. So everybody's employed. Yeah. Everybody, so and everybody's to hired. He's a help wanted sign everywhere. Yeah. So if you, so if everybody's working, how are you supposed to have a recession? Like in in this, like how are you supposed to yeah. have this large dip in housing? Yeah. Because that's what fueled two thousand. You also you had a lot of items, but then you had a large crash and a large gap, mm-hmm. like jump in unemployment, which we haven't seen yeah. over here. Yeah. Yep. You're exactly you dropping, right, you dropping some gems today, bro. You drop, you I'm, I'm with it. Game, bro. So, we, 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 we coming out the cheat seats today, I think. <laughs> Let's <laughs> get into the real estate hot or, or not. not. What do you think about this? I like that. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Y'all was synchronized too. <laughs> yeah. Like. <laughs> we be up in the, in the, in, in, on the phone, we practicing. <laughs> All right, so look, so we're gonna do it a little bit different for y'all today. Okay. So social media is famous for one guy to go. We yeah, yeah. So this is the how or not. Yeah. Condiments. One guy to go. Ketchup. <laughs> ketchup, ranch, honey mustard, or barbecue sauce. Ketchup. What? I hate ketchup. Why do people need, use ketchup? Ketchup, minimally, minimally like French if, if, if I'm going to use ketchup or anything, I'm going to just use barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce is ketchup's much attract, much more attractive sexy cousin. Bro, it's, it's like I, I, yin and yang. You got ketchup and mustard, bro. Like, no, I, I hate ketchup. <laughs> Why would I use ketchup when I have a much better upgraded condiment? Every, right every five-year-old is mad at you right now. I don't or... five-year-olds are stupid. Don't... <laughs> <laughs> what you got? Hey, I'm sorry. Ranch got to go. Yeah, I went the ranch. I ain't. I ain't. I, ain't a, I got a lot of. I, I got a lot of alternatives for ranch. Yeah, I can feel sure. like you ranch. hate on the creamy butteriness of ranch. Bro, I don't even use ranch on my uh, on my salads. I did French fries and ranch. Itali- no. Italian. I'm an Italian dressing guy. Anyway, I can't so deal with no Italian. You know, balsamic, whatever. I do like, like a no. good vinaigrette. I ain't gonna hate on yeah. vinaigrettes. Yeah, I, so I got alternatives for ranch. I, I like ketchup is ketchup. Like you can't. Bleh. It's not. It's no so substitute. Basic, bro. I, the base. We're gonna go to the next the support one. system. Base. <laughs> yeah, y'all, y'all stuck. <laughs> this is almost <laughs> y'all stuck. All right, one guy to go. Movie star slash comedians. Ooh. Bernie Mac, Martin Lawrence, Kevin Hart, Eddie Murphy. Ooh. Wait, in Eddie all Jack. their work? One gotta go. <laughs> oh, Get him out of here. God. If I got it, if I got it, well hey, I'll say I'll say Bernie. I'm with you on Bernie. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking Kings of Comedy to Joy, my no. youth. Only I reason I'm thinking is all of them got so much work. I can't get rid of Eddie Murphy Raw. I can't get rid of Nutty Professor. I can't get rid of Delirious. Bernie <laughs> Mac, what he had? Kings so, of so Martin, Martin and Eddie are definitely staying on the board. Yeah, no, that's... Yeah. I can't take Martin and Eddie. So what we... Really, the discussion Kevin to me might, is between Kevin, Kevin and... 
It's between Kevin well, and Bernie. <laughs> but you, well, you might like Kevin because no, I used to like Kevin. I like old Kevin. I don't like new Kevin because he just he got one hit and then he just kept hitting that joint over and over again. He got his bag. I ain't gonna hate on the man, Kevin. If you want to jump on the Real Estate Wire podcast, I would love it. Feel free to jump. <laughs> hey, through. come on, come on through. Yeah, we gonna, get, we gonna jump. He get I, the, I'll fry Kevin, Lord. I don't know about that. I'll fry. I, I cannot. I don't, I don't know, know, bro. I don't Kevin, know. this is chopping right now. Come hey, to the Real Estate Wire podcast. Hey, nah, he be going. You I, see the joke when he went on Meek Mills? I ain't see that one, but he wild though. He destroyed Meek Mills. His whole crew. He was frying his whole crew. Man, he fun. Kevin, he loves Kevin is hilarious. Yeah, that's tough, man. I. It's really to me. We're just down at Kevin and Bernie, and I I can't make that decision. You gotta make a decision. You gotta, make, you gotta choose one. Gotta who, choose. Who one. did you choose? I choose. I chose Bernie. He gotta go. He ain't got enough work for me. <laughs> Bernie got a lot of work. What he got? But, the Bernie Mac show. Bernie, Bernie Mac, Mac show. Is that that uh, the movie with uh, Samuel Club? Jackson when they were the old school. Players Club was funny. Um, his Def Jam stuff was good. Uh, I. St- he the OG. Now, man, I'm gonna leave Bernie on there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw Kevin off. Let me ask you this: If we do not not including all their work, just straight stand up, I gotta go with Bernie. Straight stand up. You got you know, go go watch Bernie stand up. I'm saying I gotta keep. You I gotta keep, keep, keep. I'm saying I keep Bernie. Oh, if we're okay. just talking about straight up. And you take Kevin that's, off. That's the hard part is because yeah, Bernie Kevin Mac, off. you know, like, and then obviously he doesn't get to continue his work. Like, True. Yeah. So Kevin gets an edge on that longevity, but just in that short time, that brilliance, man. Yeah. I, I can't take Bernie off, so it, it is Kevin, but not respectfully though. Respectfully. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and not an easy decision. Who next? We're going to go. I don't know, man. I might have to reconsider. You know? uh, depending on when you ask me. But depending on when you ask me, that answer is going to change. <laughs> All right. We're going to go last one. Do two more. Two more. Okay. So, snack foods, none of them are healthy, whatever. But mm. pizza, mm. burgers, mm. tacos, mm. chicken wings. One got to go. What kind of chicken wings? Mm. Any chicken wings. Any chicken wings. I get rid of the tacos. I don't need tacos. They're too messy. What, you, what do you say? You know what? I can actually live without burgers. Ooh, really? Yeah. Well, I can't. What? Yeah. I don't pizza eat. can get up out of here. Yeah, there's no, no. way. There's no way. That, I, can't that is, pizza. I can't get rid of pizza. Pizza can get up out of here quick. What? Right, no. <laughs> I mean, listen, yeah. and you can take your little brother taco with you because I ain't, I, I mean. You getting rid of two? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Savage. You know what? I got to swap that. I got to go to tacos. I'm sorry, man, because I just thought weak, about bro. that. Yeah, I got to get I gotta get rid of tacos because it's, it's just. Sloppy. I can just get a fajita and be happy. Yeah. Yeah. Does burrito count? <laughs> can I still get burritos? I think burritos, tacos, fajitas, it's total. It's all the same. It's me. Nah, it's see, then we got a different conversation. All right. Yeah. If it's just tacos, I'm thinking just a little three. You know, when you go to the restaurant, you get the tacos. <laughs> the little, yeah. three. <laughs> little three. Little three tacos. Now, yeah. street tacos are legit. Like corn tortillas with, you know, the mm. meat or whatever, and then the you know, onions and cilantro, a little squeeze of lime. I can rock with those. But, like, you're... I don't eat Taco Bell anyway. With the hard shell, uh, it I, was I, don't, I, don't, I don't eat hard shell tacos anyway. Okay, so well. we already have. I'm already down to only do half. Have so. hard shell tacos? Yes, they do. Go this to is tacos. annoying, bro. I gotta go. I gotta go. Two more. All right. Let, All right. Um, this is a social media one. One gotta go. Ooh. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Snapchat. Uh, it probably goes <laughs> Snapchat. Can I eliminate two? <laughs> I don't do Snapchat. Me either. Who cares? Yeah. And then I'll get rid of Twitter because I don't really be tweeting that much. Yeah, I don't. I haven't tweeted that much, and okay. I had to deactivate my old uh, my old Twitter anyway. You okay, know, that was the fifteen eight. Well, eighteen twenty. You know, uh, what was uh, you, Big Dog nineteen thirty three? Nah, mm-hmm. nah. I don't even remember. I don't even remember. <laughs> Nobody needs to know. <laughs> little, little, <laughs> Big player, <laughs> All right, Here's the last one. Oh, it just messed me up. Uh, okay, sitcoms. Mm. One got to go. Mm. Yeah, Different mean. world. Nah, nah, I'm gonna say we're gonna really say this. You probably. I don't know how much of these you saw, but just, I've seen probably all of them. Give okay, them to okay. me. Okay. Yeah. I'm a Different world. Huh? Fresh Prince. Yes. Martin. Yeah. All right. They put living single on here, but that's too easy. They can go. But I'm, I'm gonna throw in there. I'm gonna throw in there uh, the Cosby Show. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Cosby Show, Different World, we can't Fresh do Prince, the Cosby Show. Why can't we? Because I can't watch the Cosby Show anymore because of what I now know. Okay, <laughs> okay but I, listen, 
I can't. I try. We do not condone any of that. I don't, but, but I still can't show, watch it, so it's got to go. Itself. I'm not going to lie. You got to take out. The show itself is like. The show itself, if you just like. Okay, you, let's think. In Living Color. We'll, we'll, we'll put it in Living Color. I never saw Living Different color. World, Fresh Prince, or Martin. I wasn't allowed to watch in Living Color, so that can go. <laughs> my mom will have to. Mom will like, it, it's like So I didn't get to watch as much of a different world. I watched it a lot growing up because I didn't have cable. So yeah. it used to pop up on UPN 20 all the time. So I'm with you on that. We have cable. <laughs> we have cable here. I didn't have cable growing up. So, but, so I watched all of them. But for me personally, I'm probably getting rid of a different world. Not because of, mm. not because I think it's the best show. Uh, uh, like I'm, I think I'm giving. I just watched In Living Color that much more, and I can't touch Fresh Prince. You know, nobody like, can't, yeah, can't, can't, can't touch, touch that, Let's and go. can't touch Martin. So already, I'm down to one or two. I watched a lot more In Living Color just because of like when yeah. In Living Color was coming out. So that's really it. But and I can admit that a different world is a better show. Yeah, what you think, Coach? Man, if I if I say different world, Fresh Prince, Martin, or or in Living Color, boy, as much as I don't really I know want which to, one you about to take out, I think I think Fresh Prince got the role. Ooh, what? Hey, hot twist! Listen, Hell no! Nah. I think Fresh Prince got the role. Hell TV nah. show? Listen, and I With put Will in, Smith. Yeah, I put in category right. What? No, 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 I no. Listen, no. I can't. I can't let different world go right. Hey. Different, a different world is and like you got to choose between they, a different they, world and Fresh Prince. They got now. I know why you're saying that because the collection, the cast collection, there is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the jump off with, with uh, the different uh, living color, yeah. Yeah. with a living no, color, yeah. different world. A living color, no, yeah, living color. yeah, living color is like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, living, <laughs> living color is like so legendary <laughs> on so many levels with the. The, the the artists that would come on there, the, you know, the rappers that would come on there between, you know, the different things that they did, how they spun different, uh, I mean, just everything, the things they did creatively, how they made fun of different preachers. And but things. Fresh I just Prince, can't, I can't tell. No, Fresh Prince is, is no. Fresh Prince is kind of like you. No. If, you, if you match up Fresh Prince you and trolling. Martin, I don't watch. If Fresh Prince and Martin in the championship, piece. who he wins? Is trolling right now. If Fresh Prince and Martin in the championship in, of this bracket that we put together, who wins between Martin and Fresh Prince? Martin. Depen- it depends on who you there. ask. It depends on who you ask. Like I give it to Fresh Prince. To me personally, like, like would. Fresh Prince is at the at the top of that list. Yeah. But wait a minute, if you rank them one through four, you if I, well, if I well, oh man, you, see, see, no, you said you, your rankings Martin, get you in trouble, man. I ain't with you on that. You said Martin versus Fresh Prince. <laughs> if Martin and Fresh Prince in the championship, championship. Martin watch Fresh, Fresh Prince. Prince, huh? Fresh Prince. No, Martin watch that. Nah, because he didn't have see. The thing that, well, here, all right, here's what Martin had for him. He had character range, so he had like a bunch of different characters and stuff like that, which I like. But it, after a while, it was just like one hit. It was just like one note, same apartment. Like they didn't really change. Fresh Prince kept upgrading, upgrading, adding more characters. Like, well, he just changing. got older. He got, wait, Who, he, Martin? No, Fresh Prince got That's older. What I'm saying. They all got older, so they had like a longer, like, arc, a, a longer series arc where you saw like more character development, in my opinion, than you saw. And Mario, you didn't see as much character development. I can see, I can see that because Will did, like, you saw his, his growth. Yeah, Lisa, as in, you had, you know what I'm saying? You had little long, Ashley. Right? Yeah. Then you saw, even with Carlton, yeah. like, how he started off as kind of like a little bit more bougie. Then he got, as his character developed, he got a little bit more kind of like goofy, but then down to earth. And Hillary was really, really uh, materialistic. Mm. She still was materialistic, but she had like a fun vibe. And then Ashley, like, I don't know. I, I can't, I, only thing I will swap out. Is the Aunt Bibbs. <laughs> That's talking a, about the, uh, the old the Aunt Bibbs versus the new Aunt Bibbs. Yeah, the dark versus, 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 versus the light. Yeah. Well, you can get rid of the new Aunt Viv and I'll be I'll be golden. I don't mess with new Aunt Viv. I mess with old Aunt, old Aunt Viv. They, they both did their thing, but I think that just one one had a way just higher range of talent where the she first could one, Yeah, she could yes, dance. Yes. Bro, she that, can sing. The episode where she does, what is that, ballet or ballet, it just goes off. Yeah. That is one of the most the iconic, ep- oh, it's one of most like, iconic yeah. episodes ever. Like, yeah. so it's just, to me, to me, I, I can't, there's no way I can remove Fresh Prince, but it's also the one that I've seen the most times. I've watched Fresh Prince over and over and over so to the point I can still put it on late, late at night tonight. You know, yeah, like, I'm about, I'm, all right, let me chill. Let me go back. I'm about How to go do you to defend, sleep. What's your defense for Martin? 
I think he touched on it because um, my my family, like my brothers and my sister and I, like we geek off that like so much. So it's all it's this family connection that I have there, mm. and like and my brother can imitate almost everything that <laughs> uh, that Martin did. I mean, when you get to him doing uh, Elmore Presley or Otis yeah. or whatever, <laughs> yeah. like I didn't I would I didn't like uh, it was a little snotty nose boy. I can't uh, remember his name, but. Um, and I don't like when when black men dress, dress up, up like, like women. women. I, that that bothers me. Yeah, um, it wasn't really like I don't know when he used to do Shanae. Shanae. Yes, yeah, she was that, funny though. To me, it, it was so funny. It was, it was funny. It was that funny. Was, to me, it didn't seem like pandering like it is now. It's like pandering like yeah. Kevin. Hart, like it's almost like an initiation. You got to dress up like a woman yeah. if you want to yeah. get to the next level. Yeah. You know those Illuminati, Illuminati little conspiracy theories, or whatever. <laughs> but I thought that was more like. It was it was almost funny so much so that you really didn't even see Martin right, in it like right. all I saw was like oh that's Shanae and it's yeah. the same way it like so yeah. Jamie Fox was a uh, Wanda like you didn't see Jamie I didn't like, like his Wanda as much it, it, but yes but similar yeah it, I, see what you're I think mm-hmm. I think Shanae was like uh, the next level yeah because so. probably the who came first Jamie Fox or Martin Martin right Jamie, Jamie Fox did Jamie Fox did Wanda, Wanda before Wanda. Shanae no yeah. really? I think Shanae came first before Wanda right and Living Color was out before Martin. Oh, I thought she yeah. came off of Jamie Foxx. Uh, that was off uh, In Living Color, Wanda. Wanda was on In Living Color. Yeah, yeah. In oh, I thought that was off the Jamie Foxx show. I'm lunching. Oh, so, yeah, I wasn't allowed to watch but it. I just, but I, but I go back to right there. The, the connection. Jamie Foxx show? Yeah. I never got with that one. Now, what? It, Braxton was fun. But uh, I would just say that the I laugh. When it comes on, Like I can laugh hard at Martin on certain episodes like I've never seen it before. And Will and, and although you have a sitcom and Fresh Prince, Fresh Prince is is not as funny as as Martin. You don't I mean, think so? No. Fresh Prince had more of a family and like yeah, you, you're right. You, you can, I'll agree with you, you on can that. Gain more oh, education man. on some sort of family value from that. Because Martin had that. he had more. He, a, he had more. He, had more, he, like, was, he was a single man had a girlfriend. Girlfriend yeah. had a, had a friend that he ain't like, and what then he had two boys. That, did you tell me about that? Like when Martin was one of the first shows where. All of the black shows were about family, and then when Martin came, that was like the first one of the first shows where we they weren't that. married. And I didn't, it was all I didn't about tell them you that. not being married. Somebody told me about Some, that. I was here. It was here. I think I can't remember who it was. I can't remember who, who it was. I thought it was you. I don't remember who it was, but that was one of the first Martin black shows where, where he wasn't married. And then that was like I, I, ever since then, everybody started not being married, and it was kind of like. Oh, I did tell you that because Tim mm-hmm. Ross. Shout out to the uh, to Tim Ross. He was talking about it on his podcast, oh, and yeah, uh, yeah, he was yeah. talking about the the, uh, the elimination of the family dynamic. Right, 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 and it was so. So, where does Family Matters fall up, fall on that list? Family, family matters. matters ain't on the list. I family still watch Family Matters. Uh, family uh, Matters is legit. That is the you corn, gotta watch it again. That is not I ain't dude. Corn start watching of corn It's not cornball. It's Bro, very classic like, it, '90s comedy. It's it is, like, it is wholesome, and I was allowed to watch it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's your defense. You got a chance to watch it. Yo, let's get into. The comment section. Then we're going to wrap it up. I got one question for you, yes, sir. Baptiste, on our way out. But let's get to the comment section. So, uh, twice this week, I've gotten phone calls from clients who want to, uh, they have small businesses at different levels and they want to uh, either buy or rent commercial space in order to, for their, uh, for, to put, to run their small businesses. And so, Full disclosure, full disclaimer, we are, I am not a commercial uh, real estate specialist. I do some small commercial, I have some small commercial space, half, I guess you call it residential commercial. Uh, Baptiste has uh, rental units. So we're not commercial specialists, but we all do also have our own businesses. And so what is, I guess, uh, Baptiste, you were saying something before we started recording. What would be uh, a person's first step if they saying, hey, you know, I want to have a small business or I have a business of some sort and I want to either buy or rent a, a commercial space for this business. Well, what would you say would be step, I guess, number one, two, three? My, my first step is always telling people you got to have that first consultation with a realtor in the space that you're looking to break into. So that's that's always to me that that's step one, because then all the connections open up from there. But more importantly, before if you're looking at open up a commercial space or do something in that commercial realm, everything's got to be in order. It's not like, like it's not necessarily like buying a home. Your business got to be in order. Your LLCs, your marketing plan, 
Where's your income coming from? Are you mm-hmm. self-funding this? Are you funding this with partners? Or like, how are you like, how are you guys going to come together to make this happen? And the funds, one of the things, the biggest barrier to commercial is not, is mm-hmm. not typically your credit. It's income. It's mm-hmm. cash because commercial is cash intensive. It's not. So you either got to be really, really good at networking and raising cash, mm-hmm. or you already got to have it set aside. So yeah, one of the things from there, it's, and, and if you need, the more you need the the commercial agent to make this to make all your items possible the more you should expect to pay for those services so you've seen commercial agents charge a retainer yeah it's very it's very very common for a commercial agent to charge a retainer and it's just because of the work that you get so many people that say hey i want to open up an event space or i want to buy this multifamily property and so they'll help you put everything together they'll you'll get They'll help you put your marketing plan together. They'll help you, you know, get your business documents together. They'll connect you with all the individual people. And if you don't go through it, that they know that at the end of the day, hey, you paid this retainer five grand, ten grand. You know. So you got to start you know with <clears throat> capital. Yes. Right. You okay. need. You're going to need capital in the commercial space. It is not like how do I start off with zero dollars? Either you right. got like you can start off in residential with with little to no money down and then maybe you leverage your residential place to mm. make your commercial dreams oh, right, happen. Right, right. But you, when the biggest barrier to commercial is that some, like there's times if you wanted to buy a five unit, 10 unit place, you need 20% down, you need 25% down, you need yeah. 15. It's not, mm. there's no way around it. You got to generate it. And these are million dollar right. properties. So, I mean, I know that, um, you know, my financial coach that I work with, shout out to uh, Brandon Green, Alchemy of Money. Um, yeah. They, it's a very intensive program and it, it ain't cheap. And <laughs> we get, you know, our business is broken down to the bones and he digs through all your stuff. And one thing I know when you're trying to do, uh, if you're in Marcus, you can speak to this on the lending side to the degree that you can. The first thing they're going to want to see is a profit and loss statement for your business. So, if yep. you don't have a business set up, that's step one. <laughs> you got to set up, a, create an LLC, and then get a bookkeeper and mm-hmm. start running the books on your business. And it has to be profitable for at least the last two years. Key, keyword, profitable. Profit. Because a lot of these business owners are trying to uh, show little money so that you don't have to pay a lot of taxes on that money. Um, sometimes they try to show zero or negatives or whatever. And that works well for the IRS side of things. Sure. But it works opposite of your of your of what you're trying to do on the financing side. You gotta suck it up for a couple of years and and make sure you're showing some money because when you get into that financing piece, yeah, like they want to see. It, you, you, I mean, how how are we going to help you get this loan? How are we help you qualify for this thing? Um, unless you buy it in cash. Um, but that you know, everybody does it a little bit differently. You know, not everybody has the same goal. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's exactly right. It's what is your goal? So if you're mm-hmm. saying you know, you call me, you call Marcus, you call Baptiste, and you say, hey, man, I got this, I want to start a business. I got a business, and I want you to help me find commercial space. Okay, step number one, before we even put you with a lender or even refer you to a commercial broker who can specialize in that, we're going to ask you, like, hey, what's the business? Is it set up? Because, again, there's also things that you have to consider with commercial spaces about the zoning, right? Because if you're trying to start a daycare, you're not going to be able to run that daycare inside of an industrial zoned area. It's just they're not going to they're not going to allow you to run a daycare when it, you know, in a place that's not zoned for that. And so that's another piece of homework that you'll want that you'll need to do. And again, having your business set up properly and profitable for the last two years and having a bookkeeper, once we get you there, because and I was telling one of my clients, I'm like, look, I'm from PG County, right? And we, this wasn't the conversations at my dinner table. We weren't talking about LLCs and right. operating agreements and profit and loss statements and you know, uh, profit margins and all these things. And so a lot of my contemporaries are in that same boat. And like we were talking about earlier, Marcus, we're the, we're the channels for our community. Right. And, you know, being able, people reach out to us and say, Dan, Marcus, like, how do I do X, Y, Z? Because I'm trying to go here. And I think a lot of times with good intentions, we get the cart before the horse and we want to go rent the space. And then, you know, we build it, then hopefully they will come. Right. But it doesn't actually work that way. A lot of times they'll rent the space and then they find out, oh, crap, I got to actually set up a business. 
but you got the space already. So now you got to dig into your personal accounts and pay the overhead for the business while you're trying to generate business mm-hmm. to pay your your lease if you're renting it, right? Yeah. And so the ideal scene is you want to get the business running and profitable first so that you can pay your expenses, which is your biggest expense is going to be your lease if you're renting the space and your debt service or your mortgage when you, if you're going to buy the space. And you want to have all your books together. So your first step, get a bookkeeper. Uh, make sure that your LLC is in good standing. Um, and then get you two years of profit and loss statements. And that might say, I got to wait two years. Yeah, you got to wait. You got to wait two years. Trying to get something too fast is is usually never going to work out well. You got to put some time into it. You know, you, you, you have to take your lumps and you have to. I was watching a um, <clears throat> watching a video last night, man. And uh, it just happened to be a clip about a 60 second clip on YouTube short or something. I don't know. But it was T.D. Jakes. And I'm not a huge T.D. Jakes fan, but I think everybody in the world knows who he is. Yeah. And he talked about his first radio ministry. His first ministry was they had a tape recorder sitting next to an <laughs> amplifier, right? And mm-hmm. and that tape recorder, they record the sermons and record the service, and the deacon would take it back home to put on his stereo to then start duplicating, right? <laughs> you couldn't get this Sunday service on tape until next Sunday. Uh, and then eventually it kept going. The church kept growing in the building and, and he was the worship leader and his wife was another person in the, in the, in the church. And it was a small thing, but like over time, it takes time. Yep. It takes time. And then you got to put something into it and you're going to take your lumps and you got to grow and you got to know how to lean into uh, the, the challenges. And even your failures are not a stopping point. It's an, an opportunity to examine what you've been doing, and I and I'm speaking. We I'm going through this right now, and y'all probably go I fail through all the time. Yeah, you, you, when you fail, it's an opportunity not to stop, and it's definitely not to go backwards. But it's an opportunity to examine what what you've been doing, and here's a crossroads. And now let me pause for a minute, and then get somebody to help me fix this thing and analyze, do better, data. analyze, and then slowly go forward again. Yep. But you, so if there's a such thing of uh, failure, you fail going forward. You fail I, forward. I, I, I wholeheartedly believe every, in that. Every and then over, failure. And over time. Every failure leads you to your next success. Yeah. So it's it's not that um, it's not that you should stop. It's like okay, well, why did I fail? And I evaluate the yeah. reasons why it didn't go the way that I planned, and then I make those changes so yep. that next time around, right. I'm better for it. So and you can learn that lesson by having data. We have to have data. If you're moving into the business world, the business world is just all numbers and data. Mm-hmm. You were yeah. talking about that earlier where you put a red line through people like because <laughs> you have your all your data compiled so that you can look back over uh, an expanded duration of time and you can see your trends. Because one thing I always say is I don't I never lose. I never fail. Right. I either win or I learn. <laughs> and those are my only two options. And I love it. I'm like, oh, cool. All right. Yeah. Next, next game. Let's run it again. Let's run it again. Right. So yeah, that was um that was that was that was a good question that I had. I got that twice this week, so I thought I would ask. Let's get to this last question that I like to ask all of our guests, Baptiste. I did not tell you that we were going to ask you this question. <laughs> oh yeah, you did. I want to get your fresh perspective. So here's the question that I ask all of our guests: Where do you see real estate and the role of real estate agents? 20 years from today? No, that's actually, that's actually a great question. Um, real estate, I think in 20 years from now, we will probably, and I'll look at, I'll, I'll speak to the DMV and, and maybe even like the nation as a whole, two different subsets. So in the DMV area, I think that inventory is going to be more and more tighter as we go forward. We don't have as many large institutional buyers buying up our properties as you see in other places like mm-hmm. Florida, the mm-hmm. Sun Belt, mm-hmm. and all those other items. But at the same point, you do have investors. The education is out there. You have companies and people buying up properties to hold this rental. Like foreseeably, you may never see one of my properties hit the market until my kids are taking them over. So. That's just, I think that inventory is going to be a large part of what we see and they're not, and the cost to build homes are going to continue to rise. So to me, a home ownership is going to be even more important going forward as we do struggle with the affordability part mm. you know, over the 
year in and year out. And it's going to be the job of agents to help people in those in those in the coming future overcome those overcome those items, both through education, connecting them with resources and then providing the knowledge uh, to kind of put the entire package together to get their property. I think that, you know, like by the time Gen Z and beyond are really, really getting into the thralls of buying homes, there'll be a lot more uh, of shared home ownership where, you know, like, so, you know, a husband and a wife, two brothers, two sisters, uh, friends, more friends buying places because it will take more than one income to Mm. buy homes 10, 20 years from now because inflation is real and it does, for better or worse, affect real estate. So Mm. if the cost of wood, if the cost of metals, if the cost of the HVAC person to run the HVAC lines goes up, the cost of the electricity to the properties, the cost of the lighting that goes in those continuously goes up, how is the price of real estate supposed to drop? Man, you brought it down. I like this dude because he brings it down to the granular. He brings it to the cheap seats without us even having to ask him to bring it to the cheap yeah, seats. Yeah, that was a mic drop. Because yeah. you know, like the fact that you you went into the HVAC and the pipe and all it, it's like most people don't think about that. And, and we talked to a lot of people and nobody said that. So if that's what's up that you, that you think about it. So think about that people. There's a whole lot to just buying a home. It's not just, you know, you signing a contract, going, looking at it and, so, and having your housewoman party and all that stuff happens, but you have to think about it at a very granular level. Yeah, it's every, everybody. Everybody that works right now is expecting to make more money five and ten years from now. But that includes all the people that will work to build your home. Mm. <laughs> and the cost of land isn't. And especially when you look at the DMV, uh, I was at a uh, a fundraiser um, for Mario Bowser like last year, and um, and I don't like I I'm not a very heavy. I'm not into politics at all. I'm just like, all right, let me go see what. Her messaging is, let me go see what she's talking about. And she said, DC is not expanding outwards. It's going to be expanding upwards. Immediately to me, what I thought about was the cost of land is going to go up. Like it's going to go up. Mm-hmm. If any patch of land that they can develop yeah, is going to be more land. expensive 10 years from now. Right. So how? So I, when, when you think about people that say, I'm going to wait till prices drop, when are they going to drop? You tell me. I, I'm all ears. Because yeah. if yeah. I could, if you could predict that, then, I mean, we in the business and we don't see it. Right. I I'm just not seeing any of the data that points to it. You know, like and and in this and in this area. So what I think is gonna have. So that's what I think is gonna be the case in the DMV. And I think that over the course of the United States, uh, somebody else pointed out the stats that the median home price has only dipped but a couple times. You know, like period over the last 50 years. So trying to time that is is almost impossible i'm i'm a believer in the long haul it's hard to lose when you hold real estate for the long term you buy in a good area you buy where people want to be you buy where the jobs are located you hold that foolproof strategy i'll retire in 20 years hey um love it love Love it bro yeah well that concludes the show everybody if you're watching on youtube Make sure to like, really subscribe, good. Really good. and share this content with anybody that you think might think is dope. If you're on the podcast, make sure to leave a comment and uh, give us a five-star review. Where can they find Definitely. you at, Coach Marcus? At Fields Mortgage Group, at Mortgage Coach Marcus. And where can they find you at, Baptiste? You can find me on IG at Ask Baptiste. Love it. And I'm Dan Wheeler Sells Homes on all platforms. For all of us here at The Real Estate Wire, thank you so much. We are out. Solid. Got it. Appreciate it, man. Set up is